Welcome back to this course on advanced memory hierarchy design. The topic of this and the next lesson is hardware prefetching. In this lesson I will discuss sequential and strided hardware prefetching. This lesson is based on section 2.2 of the textbook by Hennessy and Pedersen. It is also based on some other sources. Hardware prefetching uses a hardware mechanism to predict the code or data that will be needed in the future and issues the corresponding prefetches. The, ad the advantages of prefetching in hardware are first that there is no need for program programmer or compiler intervention, which is a big plus. This implies that no changes to the executables are needed, so it can also be applied to legacy codes. Codes where we only have access to the executable and not to the source code. Third, hardware prefetching can take advantage of runtime information. Knowledge that is available only at runtime and not at compile time. Roughly two types of hardware prefetching can be distinguished. Sequential prefetching and strided prefetching. In sequential prefetching we predict <coughs> We predict if we, are so, if we are soon going to need the next sequential block or not. In strided prefetching, the next access block does not have to be the next sequential block, but can be at a certain distance or stride from the currently access block. I will give examples of both. The overhead of hardware prefetching is, of course, that we need additional hardware. This hardware overhead needs to be limited since otherwise we might have used the area for something else, a bigger cache, for example. I will discuss two sequential prefetching schemes. The first scheme is prefetch on miss. In this scheme, we issue a prefetch to the next block B plus one when we have a miss to block B. Of course, if the next block B plus one is already cached, then we generate no prefetch. The second sequential prefetching scheme is called tagged prefetch. In this scheme, a tag bit is associated with each cache line. It is cleared initially and it is also cleared when the cache block is replaced. Then when a block is referenced or brought into the cache on demand, meaning not by a prefetch but by a regular access that missed, the tag is set. On the other hand, when the line is brought into the cache by a prefetch, the tag remains zero. Now, a prefetch to the next line B plus one is issued when the tag of the current block B changes from zero to one. In a research paper, Smith et al. found that tag prefetching improved the cache miss rate of a unified cache by 50 to 90% for a set of trace driven simulation. Prefetch on miss, on the other hand, was found to be less than half as effective. This slide briefly explains why tag prefetch is more effective than prefetch on miss. Suppose we, meaning the application, access three consecutive blocks that are not cached. In the prefetch on miss scheme, the following will happen. The first block is fetched on demand. Since it is a miss, the next block will be prefetched. Then the prefetch block will be accessed. Since it is a hit, no prefetch for the next block will be generated. So the third block will be fetched on demand again. This corresponds to a miss, so the fourth sequential block will be prefetched. So overall, prefetch on miss will incur two misses, one for the first block and one for the third block. Note that I ignore the aspect of timeliness. On the other hand, in the tag prefetch scheme, the following will happen. The first block is fetched on demand. The corresponding tag changes from zero to one and therefore a prefetch for the next block is generated. Then the second block is accessed. <coughs> the second block has been prefetched so the corresponding tag was cleared when the block was prefetched and now it changes to a, a one, so the next block will be prefetched. Also, when the third block is accessed, tag prefetch will issue a prefetch for the next block. So we see 
that tag prefetch incurs one miss, whereas prefetch on miss incurred two misses. This provides some insight why tag prefetch performs better than prefetch on miss. Basically, tag prefetch discovers that code or data is accessed sequentially. When a block has been prefetched and is indeed accessed, then it gives confidence that the next block that will be accessed is the next sequential block. I now turn to strided prefetching. The basic idea behind strided prefetching is the following. If the hardware discovers that we have strided accesses to blocks B, B plus S, B plus 2S, where S is a constant, then it is likely that the next access will be to block B plus 3S and therefore the hardware prefetches, prefetcher issues a prefetch. The stride is simply the distance between two consecutive accesses. What are two consecutive accesses? Well, suppose, is, uh, suppose, a, loot, uh, suppose a load is executed repeatedly in a loop, for example. Then the stride is the distance between the addresses generated by the two consecutive executions of this load. In the 80s and the 90s, many hardware prefetches have been proposed that determine if the address, if the addresses generated by a memory access instruction exhibit a constant stride. If it does, the hardware prefetcher prefetches the block corresponding to the last address generated by the memory access instruction plus the stride. Such hardware prefetches employ special hardware that monitors the reference patterns of load store instructions recently executed by the CPU. In particular, they use a special table called the reference prediction table. This table contains information about recently executed load store instructions to predict their access pattern. This figure illustrates the organization of the reference prediction table. Similar to a branch history table, it is indexed by some lower order bits of the program counter, so different load stores may map to the same entry. Each RPT entry has four fields. The first field is the tag, as usual in such cache-like organizations. The load or store is present in the RPT if the tag of the PC matches the tag of the indexed RPT entry. Note that in this figure I omitted the hardware to perform the tag comparison. The second field corresponds to the address generated by the previous execution of this load or store. The third field is the stride, the difference between the previous address <coughs> and the address that was used before. Note that a load or store needs to be executed at least three times to be able to determine if it uses a constant stride. The final field in each RPT entry is a 2-bit state, which can be initial, steady, transient or no prediction. I will describe these states on the next slide. Then, if the load or store is present in the RPT, that is, the tags match, the state is steady and the difference between the new address and the previous address is equal to the stride field, the hardware prefetcher issues a prefetch to the address, to address, new address, plus stride. This figure shows the tra transition diagram for the states each RPT entry can be in. The first state is the initial state. This is the start state. When a load or store enters the reference prediction table, it is placed in this state. The second state is the transient state. This indicates that the stride is in transition. The second time a load or store is executed, we don't know yet if it uses a constant stride. Therefore, it is placed in the transient state. A prefetch may be uh, issued tentatively or not, depending on how aggressive the prefetcher is. The third state is the steady state. An RPT entry enters this state when the corresponding load or store has, ish, has used the same stride two times in a row, so the current stride is the same as the previous stride. When an RPT entry is in this state, 
and the stride does not change, a prefetch is generated, provided the stride is unequal to zero. If in the steady state, if uh, an entry is in the steady state and stride changes, then the RPT entry goes back to the initial state as indicated by this red arrow. The fourth state is no prediction. This state is entered when the stride changes in the transient state. Furthermore, the RPT entry remains in this state as long as the current stride is different from the previous stride. When the current stride is equal to the previous stride, the state changes <coughs> from no prediction to transient. It is also possible to move to the steady state and start prefetching, since two consecutive strides were the same. But apparently the authors of the paper on which I have based these slides decided not to do so. This completes this lesson. Thanks for watching. In the next lesson I will give an example of hardware prefetching, briefly discuss the speed up due to hardware prefetching and give a brief summary of all the CAS optimization techniques discussed in this module. Hope to see you back.